everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Healing Volcanoes On the very last day of the Cretaceous period, an asteroid over 7 miles wide slammed into the Earth and changed everything. But it wasn't only the asteroid which wiped out the dinosaurs. The incredible force of the impact created tsunamis that tore across the oceans, sparked wildfires that raged for hundreds of miles, and plunged the world into darkness. But it also helped coax eruptions from a gigantic volcanic complex in southern India. Over 200,000 cubic miles of lava were released, while gas was pumped into the sky to alter the climate. It was the asteroid that triggered the extinction event, but the volcanoes were the ones that ultimately helped devastate all of the remaining life. In a new study done by Alfio Alessandro Chiarenza and his colleagues at the University College London, it may have been volcanoes that also helped heal the world following the extinction event. The scientists created some models of what happened in the years following the asteroid impact. They found that the sheer amount of CO2 emitted from the volcanoes helped to lessen the impact of the global winter caused by debris blocking out sunlight. The eruptions helped to kill everything, but they also helped some species survive by releasing CO2 and warming the planet. The best evidence was found in the Rocky Mountains. Researchers found that 100,000 years after the impact, ecosystems were brought back to life during warming periods, consistent with bursts of CO2 from volcanoes. The excess amounts of CO2 helped jumpstart the rebirth of life on the planet. Number 9. Stronger Mammals The age of mammals was the next age following that of the dinosaurs. It's known as the Cenozoic, and we are still living in it. Because, as of right now, mammals are still the dominant terrestrial species on our planet. This age started after the demise of the dinosaurs and will continue to go on for the foreseeable future until something else wipes us all out. One of the first things that happened after the dinosaurs died and life started taking hold once again is that mammals diversified. They learned how to eat different foods, evolved unique tooth anatomy, and started bulking up. In a very short amount of time following the extinction, mammals grew to be giants. They also learned how to be omnivores, eating both plants and animals to have a better chance of survival. John Flynn from the American Museum of Natural History says that in the first 10 million years following the death of the dinos, mammals got bigger, but not their brains. Instead of getting smarter, they developed larger bodies. This is how we got gigantic ground sloths nearly the size of elephants, and creatures like the Gigantopithecus, which was in essence a real-life Bigfoot. But what a lot of people don't realize is that mammals were not new on the scene when dinosaurs died. Mammals have been around for 170 million years at minimum and lived side by side with the dinosaurs up until they went extinct. But until that point, mammals had been small, mainly to hide from the giant carnivores roaming the planet. With the dinosaurs gone and nobody to terrorize them, mammals continued to grow. Number 8. Last Dinosaur Standing in 2011, it was announced that paleontologists had finally discovered the youngest dinosaur known to science. A fossil was uncovered at Montana's Hell Creek Formation dating to 65 million years ago. This is a big deal because it was, potentially, one million years after the comet wiped out the dinosaurs nearly overnight. This dinosaur fossil was once the skeleton of a triceratops. Putting all these pieces together, we can guess with a high degree of certainty that the Triceratops was the last living dinosaur after the extinction. After everything else had gone, the T-Rex, the Brontosaurus, the Titanosaur, all your favorite dinosaurs, the Triceratops was the last one standing. Scientists don't know exactly how long dinosaurs lasted after the asteroid. It could have been a slow burn of extinction, or it may have happened very rapidly. But whatever the case, the Triceratops survived to the bitter end. Number 7. The Invincible Cockroach If we were to have a nuclear war today and it wiped out most life on the planet, cockroaches would still be crawling around afterward. It turns out that these insects could still be thriving long after humans have all been wiped out. But the survival of the cockroach is more than just anecdotal. When the asteroid from outer space smashed into the Earth and killed the dinosaurs, murdering three-quarters of all plant and animal life, 
cockroaches escaped relatively unscathed. Scientists say the main reason cockroaches have survived is because of their creepy bodies. One of the things that make cockroaches so weird is that they are flat. They are kind of reddish burgundy in color and skitter around on the ground in such a way that it repulses most people. But it's that flat design that has kept them alive for millions of years. After the asteroid hit the surface, it was total anarchy. In the first few moments following the impact, temperatures around the globe skyrocketed. It was suddenly scorching hot, which resulted in mammals and dinosaurs roasting alive. But cockroaches escaped by taking shelter in every tiny crevice they could find. Their thin bodies allowed them to slip underground or into good hiding places where they avoided the worst of the heat. Then, when the dust kicked up by the impact drifted into the sky and temperatures plunged, cockroaches survived by eating all the plants that died. The plants that didn't get enough light withered, and then the cockroaches came up to the surface to scavenge their remains. Cockroaches can eat everything from cardboard to droppings. Even in an apocalyptic situation, cockroaches are never short on a meal. Number 6. The Successor to the T-Rex If the Tyrannosaurus rex was the top predator during the age of the dinosaurs, what was the next top predator after the T-Rex went extinct? The answer is a beast called Andrusarchus, a truly enormous land mammal that evolved about 45 million years ago. Mammals bounced back big time about 20 million years following the extinction. The biggest carnivore of them all became the Andrusarchus, the T. rex's successor of terror. It hunted plant-eating mammals, it had hooves like a sheep, and it was about 12 feet long and 6 feet high at the shoulders. But its defining feature was its massive skull and huge teeth. Just like the T. rex, its head was disproportionately large when compared to its body and its teeth were huge, designed strictly for killing. As of right now, the Andrusarchus has only ever been found in Mongolia. The first skull was discovered in 1923 by lead paleontologist Walter Granger. There is only one known species, but it was a doozy. It's still the largest meat-eating mammal that ever lived, bigger than a lion and a tiger, and uglier. But here is something you'll never expect. Scientists believe the Andrusarchus is more closely related to hippos and whales than anything else alive today. Whales belong to the cetacean family, which includes dolphins. Hippos belong to the artiodactyl family, which includes everything from deer to giraffes to pigs. The Andrusarchus was somewhere in the middle, a bizarre pig-hippo-whale-dolphin hybrid. Number 5. The Impervious Crocodile Crocodiles have been around for an extremely long time. They even lived alongside the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, and they survived the asteroid that wiped out pretty much all other life on the planet. According to scientists, they survived because they had already evolved to be versatile and efficient. They were some of the only animals that could cope with the huge environmental changes triggered by the asteroid impact. Crocodiles are robust. They can survive horrendous injuries and can live in or out of water, and they can thrive in total darkness. So, when the asteroid hit the Earth, blackened the skies, and ushered in something comparable to a nuclear winter, crocodiles were living easy. Another trait that helped them to survive was the fact that they don't really eat very much. Unlike birds and mammals that need to eat every day, crocodiles can go a long time between meals. Even when food became scarce, they continue to thrive by going on an unexpected diet. But perhaps the most miraculous thing about crocodiles is that in the last 66 million years, they have changed very little. In fact, they haven't changed almost at all in 200 million years. Scientists believe it was the lack of diversity and stubborn refusal to continue evolving that was key to crocodiles surviving the asteroid apocalypse. Number 4. Our Earliest Ancestors Following the swift and miserable extinction of the dinosaurs, primates began to evolve. Our earliest primate ancestors spread rapidly across the globe within 100,000 years of the extinction event. One of the very first primates that likely took to the trees was an archaic thing, a small mammal that rose from the forest floor to hunt berries and insects. It was called Purgatorius mitkiviri, and it specialized in eating fruit, but didn't mind munching on meat if it had the chance. 
According to scientists from the University of California Museum of Paleontology, this very small and oddly adorable primate was the original ancestor of every primate that came later. That includes us, human beings. The best evidence of the tiny primate comes in the form of teeth. The teeth were dated back 65.9 million years ago. That was even earlier than the extinction of the last Triceratops. While many things were still struggling to find their place in the new world, primates were using the opportunity to advance. Without dinosaurs and their annoyingly long necks to snatch primates out of the trees and steal all the berries, they were finally able to blossom. These small primates evolved slowly but surely. They almost certainly became more numerous in North America than many other mammals and then diversified. Through this diversification, after 65 million years, human beings finally evolved. Number 3. Sharks Sharks, just like crocodiles, have been around since dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And just like how crocodiles were left pretty much unaffected by the horrific disaster, so too were sharks unscathed by the asteroid impact. A new study done by scientists from Sweden's Uppal University has revealed that sharks were not only unscathed, but actually thrived in the post-dinosaur world. Researchers analyzed 1,239 shark teeth from nine different species, spanning about 27 million years. They learned that before the dinosaurs went extinct, sharks had been on a rocky path toward destruction. Their numbers had been dropping, shark species were in major decline, and they may not have made it very long. Many of the species would have been lost, but not all of them. Scientists say sharks owe their luck to one fact. They have the uncanny ability to repair damaged DNA. This is the one trait in sharks which has protected them through multiple extinction events. They have been on the planet for 450 million years and show no sign of disappearing. Sharks also have one of the best immune systems in the animal kingdom, something that prevents them from getting sick or catching an illness. Sharks are, for all intents and purposes, indestructible. Number 2. Beaks and Birds Paleontologists believe that birds survived and dinosaurs went extinct because birds had beaks and dinosaurs didn't. Beaks may have given birds a peculiar evolutionary advantage over all other creatures on the planet following the devastating asteroid impact. Because, in all honesty, birds are the only dinosaurs still living today. A pigeon might not seem like a close relative of the Tyrannosaurus, but it is. Even their bones are almost identical. 150 million years ago, during the Jurassic period, the very first birds appeared on Earth as tiny raptors. Dinosaurs with feathers and chicken legs. Birds branched away from the dinosaur family tree, and for 80 million years they flourished. Dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus grew to be enormous carnivores, while an undetermined number of beaked bird species thrived in the skies and in the trees. These days, birds are considered avian dinosaurs, while everything from the Stegosaurus to the Brontosaurus is considered a non-avian dinosaur. The biggest defining feature is the catastrophe that struck Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula and triggered the fifth mass extinction in the planet's history. Every non-avian dinosaur died while birds kept on flapping their wings. But how did having beaks save the birds from extinction? According to Ryan Felice, an anatomist from the University College London, it's most likely because beaks allowed birds to have a much more varied diet than their relatives with teeth. They could eat seeds and nuts, bugs, berries, and anything else. As the forests were being destroyed and the vegetation was dying, birds survived because they could feed on seeds with their beaks, while the larger dinosaurs were left with nothing to eat. Number 1. Snake Evolution a new study recently published by scientists at the University of Bath suggests that every snake alive today evolved from just a couple of species that survived the extinction of the dinosaurs. Researchers have called the disaster creative destruction, saying that with the dinosaurs out of the way, snakes were finally able to evolve without being eaten. There are roughly 4,000 living species of snakes right now. By tracing their genetic history back as far as possible, Researchers were able to see that they all started to diversify approximately 66 million years ago. As soon as the dinosaurs died, snakes took off like crazy. 
But how did snakes survive the disaster when everything else died? The authors of the study argue that it was because snakes had the ability to shelter underground and to starve themselves for very long periods of time. As the bigger creatures were dying, snakes were hiding out underground and waiting for the right time to go back to the surface. They didn't need to eat, and they more or less napped while the animals on the surface were dying in a hellscape apocalypse. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye.